Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of The Big Review. My name is Eric Young. I'm the CEO and Creative Director of EY Studios. We're an elite-level partner with Big Commerce and the reigning champs, the current Partner of the Year with Big Commerce. A very big honor. Very thankful for that. We're also thankful that you guys are here. We know you're very busy, super busy schedules, but you're about to see a webinar with a lot of really great content, a lot of fun. I want to get right into it and introduce my co-host here, Grace Martinez. Grace, how's it going? Going great. Happy to be here. Ready to get started. Glad you're here. UX designer here with EY Studios. And we're also joined by Amir Hassabi. Amir, are you there? Hi there. Thanks for having me on. Very good. Amir is a solutions engineer with Big Commerce. Tell everybody what that means. What do you do over at Big, Amir? <clears throat> My job is to assist merchants who are going through the evaluation process of Big Commerce to make sure big commerce is the right fit for their business and if they're doing something special on the on the on their specific instance of business uh meaning whether it's some special use cases on the offline or online side of the business we help them uh, accommodate that appropriately within our software and uh, other technology partners that we might leverage great and Amir, what what would you uh, encourage people to expect today on the webinar what can they uh expect here um, today, I think we have a lot of uh, great sites that we're going to review uh, to talk about uh, what are some best practices that you can leverage uh, from the platform or in general in the industry, uh, what are some UI, UX uh, improvements and that some folks can make, uh, or what are some tips and tricks that uh, you, Grace, and, and I have seen uh, just in the industry in general, I think. That's exactly right. So. Other notes as far as uh, what to expect. The first is these are not meant to be full reviews. So we could spend the entire hour, right, Grace, on oh, one yeah. site. And so we're going to hit the high points. And for the sake of time, we'll point out as much as we can within the time allotted. And just keep in mind, too, if we don't get to your site today, uh, we'll reach out to you to offer a one on one site review. In fact, Grace, we've had several folks already ask for that. They didn't want a lot of their information being made public, and that's totally fine. And so if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one site review, if we don't get to your site today, just let us know. We'll, we'll be happy to arrange that. And we're also going to offer a Q&A session right after the site reviews. And I would be remiss, Grace, not to recognize Ivana here. <laughs> Ivana <laughs> right. uh, Gonzalez, she is our executive producer, right? She can right. put that on her LinkedIn. She's making sure everything works well. How's it going, Ivana? It's going great. <laughs> um, and I just... Um, want to say thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah we're, we're glad to have you. All right. So uh, we have a poll, right? Uh, we, we want to get to that. So we want to always kind of see exactly where merchants, where their heads are at, Grace, before we go into a site review. And uh, anytime I get a chance to uh, be on site uh, with a merchant, I want to see kind of what's important to them. So we've got it up on the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's a few things. You want to walk them through that, Grace? Yeah, so we're just asking which site element would you like to see pointers on. So if there's a specific one of these that you're really looking for some tips and tricks on, we have navigation, um, home page, cart and checkout, product page, and your category page. So whichever one you're looking for the most suggestions on, you can let us know and we'll make sure to include that yeah. in the next webinar. All right, so go ahead and click on that. Take a few seconds. We're seeing some results come in here. What's important to you guys? All right, let's see the results of the, the quick poll here, Ivana. Okay, pretty good split there, pretty Grace. Pretty good tie right there. What, for, are you, what are you thinking, Sam? Uh, navigation and homepage, which, which makes a lot of sense because that's where people land. It gives right. the first impression of your product and what you sell. And um, so I think that, that, that's that's makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we're going to touch on all these in various aspects of the sites we're reviewing. I'm glad to see navigation is first. We're mm -hmm. going to obviously spend a lot of time on that with some of the sites here. Um, okay, Ivana, we've got the first site pulled up. All right, so we're, let's let's cover grillgreat.com. Now, this is a Georgia-based business. EY Studios is based in Atlanta. They're a little north of here. Um, so let's get uh, Grill Great up there. So the first thing we're seeing here is it's a very masculine side. That's very appropriate for the demographic. What are, what's your thoughts overall on the look and feel, Grace? Yeah, I think they're doing a great job drawing you in. They know their audience. Uh, they're using some lifestyle imagery to grill the big hunk of mm -hmm. meat. You know, they're they're making sure you're at the right place. We know what you're looking for. Right. Um, and we're going to give you a little few tips to make it even better. Right. And Grace, I had a chance to talk to the CEO 
of Grill Great uh, before the webinar, and just to kind of, again, to see where his head was at, some uh, goals that he had for the site. One of the things he mentioned is that his customers, he deals with a lot of confusion. Uh, they hit him up on Facebook, uh, they call in, and they say, am I buying the right product? Is this the best for my grill, et cetera? And one of the things we talked about is that there's, there's really two main aspects of buying a grill grate. First, you've got to know your brand, right? And then you've got to know the right size that fits your grill. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. What do you think, Grace? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people know, they know what they bought. They're familiar with their product. They love their big green egg or their mm -hmm. charcoal grill. So when they come here, they're looking for that brand recognition and a quick and easy way to find exactly what they need for their specific product. Right. Now, Bonnie, if we could just slowly go down the home page to see what we're working with here. We have this rotator, and then we've got the uh, shop now, uh, which tabs between the various types. The grill great difference, uh, which talks about the quality of the products, how it works. Uh, What's your take on seeing all this, Grace? What, what pops out? So I think it's, it's a lot of good information, but I think what it's missing is kind of what you were talking mm -hmm. about earlier is, is kind of the step-by-step -step process for finding exactly what you right. need. So we have the how it works with how the grill works, but I think what they could also use is how this whole process works. Yeah, Grace, I call it explain the gimmick. Right. That's just a phrase I put out there. And what I mean by that is if, the, if you're selling products that are not impulse buys, right, mm -hmm. that you can just pick up and go, that you have to think about, these products, the site can't take that for granted, right? I mean, if, if in using the owner's words, sometimes they'll deal with cl clueless customers. What I would say in response to that is put the clues out yeah. there, explain what it is so that you're not making the users think too much. Right? And so I think you've got the real estate to do that, and that would just in increase some of the clarity. Yeah. Um, so if we could, Yvonne, if we could scroll all the way back up to look at the navigation, one of the things that I want to point out, if we could, uh, Actually, first of all, mouse over Kamado. This is a type of grill. And we have, uh, actually, just go ahead and click on it. Actually, this doesn't mouse over. Go ahead and click on Kamado. All right, the first thing we're seeing, Grace, is the, the big video. Hopefully, that's coming through on the webinar software, but a, a very big video. You're not seeing any brand specific elements here, though. You're not seeing logos. Again, first thing you've got to think about in your situation is what brand are you thinking about? Uh, and you've got this phrase here, take hot and fast grilling to another level. Take this apart, Grace. What are you seeing? So the biggest thing to me, lifestyle video is a great thing to have. Good but, quality video. Yeah, great. But when you're clicking on Kamado, you're wanting to find that product. And when I land here, I'm not even sure that I'm necessarily on the right page. Mm -hmm. So I would want something that immediately tells me like a big header that says like Kamado grills or just something with that brand recognition to say, hey, you're in the right place. Uh, continue shopping. Well, and speaking of brand recognition, when you're thinking about Kamado grills, the two big ones are Big Green Egg and Kamado Joe. Yeah. Uh, we're, we like to grill down south. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, know, we know our grill brands. And so to me, just having those brands represented, having those logos, et cetera, would be, like you said, a point of recognition, mm -hmm. but also something that we can use within the navigation. Mm -hmm. So as we scroll down, Ivana, then you start to see uh, some more content, some links. Actually, scroll a little bit further up. Thank you. Um, that more information. Grace, before we get into the thumbnails, what about that content? What's your take there? So it's great. I think it's good to have information on all these girls. I will say the one thing is they could use the space up a little bit better because right now there's so much white space on the sides and such big text that it's actually pushing the product further down the page. And your main goal of an e-commerce site is to sell product, right? right. So you don't want to push that product too far down the page and make your user scroll to get to it. So while that information is valuable, I think it could be treated differently. All right. Now I want to show you something. We're going to come back to thumbnails, but if you could, Ivana, if you could scroll all the way back up and go ahead and click on charcoal. So this is another type of grill, obviously. And so the thing I want to point out is it's pretty much the same video, if not the exact same video with text here that's not specific. Uh, I mean, of course, you've got charcoal in the phrase, but I think, like you said, Grace, just be very blunt, very upfront to know you're, you're on the charcoal page and show some products, show some brand logos. As we mouse back down to where the thumbnails uh, were on this page, so look at the second uh, row, the, the third one in, grill grates for the 14.5 inch Weber, kettle grill, small green egg, mini max, acorn junior, great for SEO, Grace, but what do you think about usability? 
So it, it's definitely a lot mm -hmm. as a user just to take in. I think something that they could do and make this a little bit more organized is one, the use of filters so that people could filter by size and by brand um, or even by price. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing they could do is um, the, the, the orange is a little overwhelming. To yeah, me. we're going to talk about orange here in just a bit. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, let's use that as a good segue to click into a product page, Ivana. Okay, so let me point out some things I like about this page. Grace, I love the large image. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, sites have a very small uh, product photo. Here it's large and in charge. It's right there. I love that. Um, I want to talk about the buy box here in a second. But before we do, I like the uh, lifestyle images for the shots below. What about that second one, though, Ivana? Click on that where it says great tool included. Grace, what do you think about that? I think that's important to note, mm -hmm. especially since the first product that you're showing has that that great tool on it because people could be confused. Hey, does this come with my product? Right. Does it not? But um, it might not be the best place to put that. Mm -hmm. I might put that in the product description or part of the name. Um, it, it's just it's a little crazy to have that mixed in with your alternate images. Right. Now, you mentioned the color orange <laughs> here. Let's talk about the impact that has on the product page. OK, so we've got. Uh, two very large orange buttons, sear and sizzle at the bottom, the how to measure. Of course, we've got the orange uh, star uh, reviews here. And, of course, the great tool included is also orange. Those all pop. Uh, what does not pop, Grace? Add to cart and price. Okay. What's the challenge <laughs> with that here? So what we like to do at EY is establish a sales funnel color, which right. is what we like to call it. So basically we set a color from homepage all the way through your site that is not used anywhere else. And it, it we make sure it pops against all your other brand colors. Mm -hmm. um, and we use that just to kind of make it easy path for the customer. So they know, hey, when I see this button, I know I'm going further down the sales funnel. Okay. I'm getting one step closer to making a purchase. And they actually use orange a lot throughout the site for shop buttons. Mm -hmm. They're also using it for other things, which we wouldn't suggest. But it's funny that when we get to the product page, that's when they stop using right. it for shop buttons. And this is when we would suggest it almost the most. Um, so you want your add to cart to pop more than anything else on this page because we want them to get that to add the product to the cart. So. Absolutely. And it needs to be big as well. Right. You, the, you know, it's good that add to cart has contrast, but in uh, relation to these orange buttons, that can work against you. So let's go ahead and click add to cart here and see what happens. All right. So I want to bring Amir into this. So um, Amir, we've got this pop up, um, which is... To, for the most part, big commerce functionality. But what's your, what's your take in seeing this, Amir? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, what's not big commerce is uh, two two things that specifically pop out to me. One is that the product image on the left-hand side of this uh, three-column area uh, that we have uh, is has been removed. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I really like to see the things that I'm buying. Um, it's just a you know visual thing. People, uh, it's a it's that it helps with that instant gratification uh, feeling that you can kind of you you feel really good that you just bought this uh, piece for your grill and that you know you're gonna use it soon because it's arriving in two days. So kind of uh, really uh, keeping that uh, excitement and momentum going, right? Um, but what I don't want to immediately see right next to proceeding to check out is how I can return this item to you, right? Um, so. I think uh, there, there could be a little bit of a reshuffling of where the, the information is shown. I mean, it's a, I think it's great practice to have co contact information and those pieces on the page. Uh, but unless you're legally required to have that on this on this specific view, uh, I may put it in the bottom of the page or completely remove it from that area uh, to just uh, to make sure that the eye really focuses on the forms of payment. Like, how can I? What is the next? How do I go to the next state? step right you want the proceed to check out just like the add to cart button to be the the, fo the focus right uh, or you want one of the if you're preferring one of the other um, specific um, digital wallets to pop you know you might want to do some styling around it I would even go as far as uh, decoloring and kind of doing the white and gray colors of the credit card uh, logos so that the shopper doesn't think that those are clickable items either. So just some uh, kind of uh, UI um, comments there, uh, but nothing, nothing major. I would um, that I that I would you know be super concerned about. Good points, Amir. Thank you, Grace. What, what's your take on what he's saying? Yeah, I would just back up everything he said and continue just talking about how important color is here. So you have 
the, the ma main thing you notice here is your credit card icons and PayPal. And if people don't have PayPal, everything else is receding. So again, you just want that proceed to check out to be that bright orange color, be super obvious to click and kind of let everything else fall back. Um, and then, like he was saying, just moving those shipping services and returns exchanges maybe down to the bottom of this pop up just so that's not at the forefront right. when you first open this. And, and some people might say, why are we critiquing that the this pop up box? But this matters. This is the first yeah. thing you see when oh, you yeah. click add to cart. So this is extremely yeah. important. And especially because with a site like this, people might only be buying one thing. So as soon right. as you add to cart, they're right. ready to check right. out. So this could be the end all be all. So you want to make sure you get it right. Get it right. Okay. I would all even right. go as far as saying uh, one more thing on this is that you sure. have the you may sure. also, li uh, also like pieces. So in re leveraging those information, if if we wanted to use the real estate, I would try to put upsell items on that right side so that you could potentially add some more items to the cart while the shopper is um, you know, in that process and then help them uh, carry through. So um, just, just moving things around in that environment itself could, could help a lot. Right. All right, good points. All right, and that was obviously a big commerce site. Let's review a site that is not on big commerce. Next up is Cartier. <laughs> Cartier, a brand that everybody's, I would assume, is familiar with. Uh, lots to talk about here, Grace. We're kind of under the gun to, to cover much as we can, but uh, walk us through us, Grace. W what are you seeing here? So one of the first things, just going down the page, obviously, is talking about that header. So when we say header, we're talking about everything with the logo and all those links at the top before you get to that video. Um, and the one of the main things that we like to do is kind of create a difference between the links. So you want your top level categories, which is jewelry, watches, engagement, you want those to stand out way more than all your other utility links, which is what a term we use here, which is like to contact us and find a boutique and your phone number, because you just want the top level categories to pop way more because they're your shopping categories. So obviously you want people to click on those rather than the other things. And right now they're being treated all exactly the same. So um, I would definitely take those down a font size and maybe bring your top level categories up a little bit just to create a little bit of a hierarchy. Um, another thing is that shop online for your shopping bag creates a little bit of confusion. That's right. You are yeah. shopping online. Yeah, you're already shopping online. It, it almost implies that if you click that, you'll start shopping, which isn't the case because it's going to take you to an empty cart. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just probably change that to shopping bag. Um, and or cart or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, something, yeah. yeah. Um, but for the... The homepage, so they're starting to use some great lifestyle um, videos, which is, is big for a brand like Cartier because you're selling, you are selling a lifestyle more like than you are necessarily a product. There are only certain types of people that buy these products. We've so, got this video. They are really They're They're selling love. love. Yes. yes. A, <laughs> they're they going hard for Valentine's Day. Very excited. Um, <laughs> all right. So, but does this work on Valentine's Day? Uh, does, do you think that they're opening well with this? I mean... So I'll, I'll say the idea behind it is great. I think that the execution, because the text kind of gets lost mm -hmm. a little bit to me. Um, you're, you're watching, watching the movie. Yeah, you're watching right? the video, and there's not a lot of contrast between the text and the video behind it. Mm -hmm. So you don't even necessarily know what it's advertising. Right. So I would say the maybe the CTA, the 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 button the call should to be action. yeah, the call to action should be that a red like the Cartier red, just to make it pop a little bit more and oh, see oh Valentine's Day. That's mm -hmm. what they're advertising. Right. Well, let's move on down slowly. Ivana, as we look at some of the static graphics beyond this video here. So, Grace, what are you seeing? So, one thing I'll say, they they do a good job of creating these graphics with mm -hmm. the, like, creating dimension with their products. I, I really like that effect. I will say it becomes a little convoluted because mm -hmm. they're treating um, a bunch of their different categories and collections and specific products all the same way. Um, so uh, typically at EY, we like to create kind of a parallel between the things that we're selling in our graphics. So for instance, if we're selling um, all our rings and all our watches and our jewelry would be kind of treated the same way. They'd be about the same size with the same um, call to action button and the same text size. But this is kind of going back and forth um, and nothing is quite aligning. Mm -hmm. So I would think that you would want to create a little bit um, more of just a streamlined approach to how they're designing these graphics. Right, I agree. So it makes it an easier shopping experience. So let's click into a category page. Where do we want to go? Okay, let's let's hover over jewelry because I want to talk about this mega menu. Okay, now, yeah. Grace, the first thing I'm seeing is just gray and the white right. here. Okay, I, I can't quite understand why high jewelry 
Would you say that high jewelry is being called out because it's white or the gray or what, what's your it's, thought on that? It's confusing. And that, I think not having the chance to talk to Cartier specifically about the reasons mm -hmm. behind this. So we're kind of guessing, but that that's the experience of the customer. They don't get a chance to talk to Cartier. So they're not really sure why certain things are being white and certain things are on gray backgrounds. And it's kind of the same way if you highlight over watches and engagement, they're all being slightly yes. treated differently. I don't know what the what the reasoning behind it is. So I would probably just say either keep that consistent or Be make consistent. it super obvious yeah. what you're doing. Well, that is view all, Grace. So sometimes they'll have view all products and they'll add view all collections. That that part is not consistent either. I'm not a big fan of a double view all. What, what do you right, think? Right, right. And I would think they, they seem to have view all products on all of them, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. People want that. Sure. And I think a simple solve for this one is they have a collection category. So just make that clickable and make it obvious that it is clickable. and then that takes the confusion yeah, away. Yeah, right now it just looks like yeah, text. Right. It's not immediately obvious that it's clickable. Right. Uh, so let's click into so a uh, category page. Rings. Okay. And when this loads, so basically this will load a category section page. And it's not your this typical. This is a landing page. Yeah. This is, yeah. It's not your typical category section page. Um, that we're used to. So normally when we do category section pages, we do more of what's at the top here. So we'll do something just kind of describing the page that you're landing on right. and then just um, organizing it by the types of rings. So you would just have like a click on for all the types of different rings. But this is being treated very much like a landing page for mm -hmm. all of their collections, which is interesting. It, it's great, yes. but I think it's um, a little bit confusing because everything is running together. So if you start scrolling, you have all these banners that are designed kind of the same, but not exactly the same. And all the different collections are sort of grouped, but there's only a tiny bit of white space in between each collection. So they're just really, really running together yeah, as so you scroll down the page. That, well, let's do that. Let's dive into this. Yeah. This is very interesting. Okay. Question for you ladies. Um, is anybody going to buy a $1,300 ring as an impulse buy off a section page? That, is that maybe I'm in the No, probably here. not. I think a more accurate Call to action would be see more details or right. something that takes you to that product so you can dive into it more because I don't think, like you said, anyone's <laughs> just going to add to cart from here. Even if they got the money, right? Yeah, uh, they're going to want to know a little yeah, more. Yeah, they want to have a little bit more detail on that. Grace, the thing that I'm finding interesting about this layout is they, they have the equal size rectangles here. The, the top left, which is three types of gold, three bands, one icon. It's the exact same size as the image underneath, and I can't immediately tell if this image is related to this gray box or if it's another ring like we have on the far right with yeah. the Trinity ring well, both types of Trinity rings. What, what do you think yeah, on that? It's, it's just, this whole layout is just very confusing because mm -hmm. of the way that everything is smushed together. And so I don't know whether it's like a quadrant layout right. or if it's, uh, it's just a little bit confusing. This, this, it's like we were just talking about with Grill Great, how a customer's eye is attracted to like-minded objects or right. like exactly. colored objects in the orange with the Grill Great. Here, you've got rings that are obviously very similar. And so the eye is, is looking at comparisons and when they see something that's not exactly lining up, it, it feels off, yeah. right? Yeah, it just makes it feel a little awkward. Okay, where are we looking at? Okay, if we scroll back up, let's click on View All Products. Okay. And this is going to take us to a product listing page or section page where it lists all your products for you. More lifestyle shots. Right. So this so, is interesting to me, this image at the top. What do you think? So off the bat, it, it has a little bit of a problematic just call to action mm -hmm. because immediately it's saying view all collections, which actually, if you click it, takes you back to the page that you were just on. So it takes you right back, back to the page. So okay. instead of going okay. further down the sales funnel, it's actually making you regress, which okay. is never something that we right. suggest. We want you to get closer to a purchase rather than further away from a purchase. And in addition to that, it's a very large banner. I think we could kind of reduce the size mm -hmm. vertically so that we can push the products up the page, kind of like we were talking on Girl Great. They're just being pushed further down the page, and right. we want people to see those on page load kind of peeking above the fold. Um, so as you scroll, you start to see that there are some more things we could do to accomplish that as well. So um, with Big Commerce, you have the you can do pagination at mm -hmm. the top where you can say, hey, we have this is displaying 10 out of 326 items. So you can still accomplish that, put it in a smaller font, 
put it closer to the top, move that 1895 collection up a little bit, and then automatically your rings are peaking above the fold and people are seeing product on page load. The 1895 thing threw me. Yeah. You got 326 right. miles. Yep. I realize that 1895. It's competing. <laughs> but it's also another number, right, yeah. after 326. And right. Maybe I'm in the minority there, but I just think that could be a little bit more clear right. if we're calling that out. Uh, I do like the variety with the filter here. Mm -hmm. what, what, are, what are your thoughts on the filter? They do a great job on having lots of options to filter by, which is something that Grill Great was missing and could have done that we talked about. Right. So I think it's great that you can search by stone shape or category or metal type. Um, they do a really good job. Oh, yeah, with that. I like that. And then if you scroll a little bit. So another thing I just want to point out before we go into the product page is these call to actions. I think just having them on two lines makes it a little bit not as clean as we want it to be, especially for a big luxury brand like Cartier. I would just simply say add to bag or add to cart just to keep that a little bit cleaner. Having bag on one line by right. itself is a Yeah, it just looks too. a little off. And Grace, even though we have a vertical format for the feedback and add a shopping bag, still very similar and yeah. your eye darts back and forth with that mm -hmm. color and the approximate size right. of its rectangles, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, but I will say they are doing a better job of creating a parallel between the sales funnel and their I would actions. agree. I would yeah. agree with that. All right, where are we going? Uh, let's go to the first that first band. Don't just click the product, yeah. Okay, don't add to the bag. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ready to buy this just yet. I want to know life. a little bit about it. Okay. All uh, right. All right. Lots going on here in this buy box, which again is the area. Uh, uh, on the right here, starting with the title all the way down. Lots of white space to the left, but lots going on in the buy box. What do you think, Grace? Yeah, and I think the problem with what's going on in the buy box is things that aren't similar mm -hmm. are being treated similarly. So you have size, which is a drop down, and then you have sizing guide, which looks like a button, but we don't typically treat that like a button. We typically have like a little icon with a measuring tape that's a sizing guide, and when you click it, it creates a pop-up. Um, and then you also have engraving, which would typically probably be an input box, but here it looks like a button. Um, so we have these three boxes that are all about the same size, and there's no, they're not being treated any differently, mm -hmm. um, even though they all have a different function. So I would definitely say you need to be treating those slightly differently. And right. same, same thing with all these add to shopping bag, um, call to order by phone, find a Cartier boutique. Um, the add to shopping bag, they are making it red. It is the thing that I look at most sure. on the page, so that's great. Um, I think it feels a little off being left aligned. I would make it look more like a button center align that, make it a little bit Agreed. bigger and make it look different. Because right now, the order by phone is actually bigger, taking up more space That's than true. the shopping cart. Right, point. exactly. So I would say make that the most prominent thing and then treat um, the other two slightly differently. And then maybe move contact us to not be expanded and maybe not be right there. Because That's good. Well, Grace, yeah. first thing I'm seeing here, in addition to what you're pointing out, are, is the amount of imperative verbs, right? It's verbs that are basically command words. Uh, of course, add with add shopping bag, but you also have contact, uh, book, et cetera. And so you're giving a lot of messaging, you know, view more up at the top. Got to be very careful about the amount of messaging yeah. that you're putting on product pages. Because as you mentioned, even though add a shopping bag is dominant, there's still a lot buying yeah. for the customer's attention, which for, you know, higher priced items in particular, uh, can be a, a big detriment. Yeah, and I mean, your ultimate goal is that add to bag. So you want to make sure that's the imperative that sticks out above all else. Okay. Anything else on this side? I think we're good to go. All right, so lots we could point out on yeah, Cartier, yeah. but we want to get to We're going to move forward sites. so we can show you some more stuff. Yeah. And so we're going to pull up Nordic Wear, which is a brand that some people may be familiar with. Right. Amir, as we go in here, what are your thoughts on as we leave Cartier? What 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 are, what are some opinions you have? I think it's um it's a very complex site. You know, there uh, just like you guys pointed out, there is there's quite a bit to bit to dissect and go through in, in about every every page and uh, and a lot of the times uh, you also have to keep in mind that uh, there is a lot of complexity that 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 their business has. And and there is a lot of limitation that the technology that they might be using uh, that they might have to been you know forced to go a certain route. So it's uh, you know it's really interesting to always come across brands like Cartier or 
um, you know, other brands that we serve on, on the platform uh, to, to help them go through those um, steps and uh, unpeel the onion and figure out, you know, what's the best way to, to re-platform, to redo it, to improve it, just like you said, uh, to a lot of the points that you and Grace made. Good points, Amir. And before we go into Nordic Wear, and Ivana, we can go ahead and pull that up uh, when you can. But uh, guys, uh, again, we appreciate you joining us uh, for the very first episode of The Big Review. Um, and uh, this is exciting for me and Grace and Ivana. We love doing this. It's, it's what we do all the time here at EY Studios. If you guys have any questions about usability or anything related to site design, uh, go ahead and hit the, the field. What do they need to do, Ivana? Uh, there's a question field that you guys can submit. I see some of you have already submitted questions, Great. but if you have any other questions, um, we'll get that uh, towards the end of the webinar. Yeah, we'll have a Q&A right after we review the sites. Uh, we have two more sites here we're going to hit. So the first one is Nordicware um, here. Grace, initial thoughts. So I think they do a good job with their their imagery. Like it draws me in, but I will say the one thing is I'm not 100% sure what they sell upon page load. Um, they they actually, don't sell cake. Yeah, they you don't cannot, sell cake. I, I wish cake. they did. Yes. I wish they did because they look really delicious. But they actually sell the stuff to make the cake, which right. isn't immediately clear um, upon coming here, especially because the call to actions are shop and recipes. Yeah. So it's just a little bit confusing. Which, so seems, which seems odd when you have an e-commerce. I mean, it's great to have ancillary information right. like recipes, but right up against shop. Yeah. Seems a little odd there. Yeah, maybe further down the page mm -hmm. is what I would probably say. And especially because um, on that image, the, sh the shop being red actually doesn't pop as much as the white necessarily. Mm -hmm. So recipes is actually kind of popping a little bit more to me. Because from a yeah. contrast yeah. standpoint, right? Yeah, so, um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I like the fact that they're calling out uh, the unique selling propositions. We call them USPs. And yeah. you have free shipping on all orders over $35, 20% off. Uh, for threshold there, 30%. So I like that they're putting that front and center. You know, a lot of the bigger brands don't do that because they can kind of rely on the strength of their brand. So I like the fact that they're uh, being very communicative about what's special about the products, what's, what is uh, related to the customer right now that they right. can take advantage of. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to take a look at the navigation on this one in particular, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. So let's hover over bakeware. So it's it's a lot That's when a you lot. first load yeah. it. Um, I think there's a lot of things we could do here to make it a little bit more easy to shop for the customer and mm -hmm. not as much to process when you first view it. I think there's right now they have everything within category, including like new um, collections, everything. So I think what they could do is break it down by those things. You could say shop shop by collections, list all your collections. Shop by bunt pans, list all your bunt pan categories. You know whatever shop that all yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever that may be, they know their products better. That would be something that we would work with them on. But I think breaking those up into smaller chunks would make right. this a lot more digestible. Um, another right. thing is that that section over there for the featured product. How do you feel about that, Eric? Uh, featured product, see featured product. To me, there's just no fanfare, right? There's no energy or enthusiasm. I and mean, you've got the space for it, goodness. You've right. got all the space here. Uh, of course, I think that it would work well if we could consolidate, streamline the categories like you mentioned mm -hmm. but why is this a featured product you know yeah. what's what is it right <laughs> what, what is this thing that i that is featured and uh something beyond just a thumbnail level image is what i'd recommend what do you think yeah we like to dress it up we treat it more like an ad than it is just like a product with a product image so we would probably give a little bit of buy and like check out our new bunt pan and this is why you might like it and then have a call to action that's a button more like than a tag. Brand new bunch. Yeah, brand, brand new bunch. <laughs> right. Yeah. Bunch of love. So, you know, you've got, you've got these, uh, you know, category brand accessories. What I find interesting is they, they have pro form bakeware, pro cast, et cetera, but you have brands under category. Right. Now, under new, you've got a very general uh, subcategory which can apply to anything, right? Here's our new stuff. But then directly underneath that, you've got Disney Frozen 2 Bakeware, which is a very specific brand, right. uh, something that should be called out because of that. But it just it feels like it's just among a pile of other categories. You know, you've got half size bunts, you know, uh, three quarters of the way down. So I, I think when the customer is forced to compare and contrast this number of categories, it can really work against you from a usability standpoint. Right? Yeah. This is something they... I would recommend Nordic Wear really pay attention to. Yeah, I agree. I All right, where are we going? 
Okay, let's click on bakeware now. And this is going to take us again to a category. So this is the landing page. Category the section page, right. yes. And it's not being treated how we typically do at all. It okay. actually, upon page load, looks like a product listing page or a section page. So um, if you start scrolling down, we'll talk about that featured section here in a second. Um, just keep scrolling. So it has actually, it just lists oh, random products. Right. But it has all of the subcategories almost as filters over there on the left. And it's like everything that was in it's, that massive <laughs> mega menu. It's right there. Yeah. Right. So again, it's just like, it, it's hard to digest. Yeah. It's hard to find what you're looking for exactly. Um, so again, breaking this down into smaller chunks, I think would help them a lot for their customer shopping experience. Yeah. Now, Amir, you had an observation about the way they're doing this. What What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think um, at least from what I can see on the categories, uh, to Grace's point, the reason that they are setting up the categories that way is because there's no product filtering on the category pages. So if you right. go to right. any of those categories, there's no way for you to um, filter down to the specific thing that you might be looking for on that page. Therefore, you just have to scroll down up and down of that page and uh, read all the different names and try to figure out the keyword that you're looking for. Uh, but if you were to put uh, some, you know, basic even, or um, if we're talking about like the events or those holidays type of um, uh, bakeware that they have, they could create filtering on those category pages and uh, eliminate even the categories for those uh, from the navigation at least, or from majority of the navigation um, in in the mega menu that they had. So I think um, some reshuffling of that, adding some categories uh, could really help organize the products a lot better and then allow the shopper to find things a lot quicker because the quicker somebody finds something, the more likely they are to purchase it. Exactly. And then before we leave this page, I just wanted to go back to that featured bakeware section. So it's being called out like these are the three things that they really want you to notice but they're actually not being distinguished much from the rest of the page. They have that very, very subtle background on it. So mm -hmm. I would Light say, gray. yeah, I would say if that was something that they wanted to call attention to, they need to call attention to it a little bit more, maybe adding CTAs or just like a darker color background, uh, mm -hmm. just to make that a little bit more obvious. Speaking of color, what do you think about this favorite functionality of the light so blue there? It is the most prominent thing on the page, which wish lists are great to have. I think that's a great functionality. Um, but it being the most obvious thing isn't what we would suggest. Typically, we would have a view product or add to cart um, button, and that would be the most obvious mm -hmm. thing rather than this wish list because it becomes very prominent and eye-catching as you go down the page, but almost at a fault. Well, what we've encountered, Grace, with bigger brands like Nordic Wear is they have their style guide, right? They have their brand standards. And so when I look at something like C product, it feels very ephemeral, yeah. uh, it's very thin font. Mm -hmm. But when you have dominant colors like what you've got above that, that text has to pop out. Right. And you've got to make sure that those call to action, those CTAs uh, still work, yeah. right? And they're not competing against some secondary elements like the wish list yeah. icon. Because this goes back to, do you want people to add it to your wish list or do you want them to purchase it? Uh, yeah. And right now, wish list is winning out and yeah. that's not what you want. Again, what is the main purpose of the page? Right. Make sure it's your design follows that. So let's click in. Where, okay, where let's we going? go to cast aluminum bakeware over okay. there on the left. And this is going to take you to an actual listing page. So um, again, this is what goes back to what Amir was saying. They have no filtering options. I believe this page has over, um, or this section has over 10 pages um, of products. So they could greatly benefit from, 10 some, pages. Yeah, okay. from some filtering, whether that's shot by price, shot by, I mean, they have like multiple bump pans in one pan, like, right. I don't know what that's called, but whatever that is, uh, shot by metal, anything like that that can help the customer find what they want easier. Um, and again, the same things apply here with that wish list and the C product as well. And there's the featured item. Yep. I see it right there. <laughs> okay. All right. So we need to click into Yeah, let's go page. to the third row and click on that middle. The, keep going. Oh. The marquee bunt pan. Yeah. So this is something that we love when people do, is when they create banners for things that are new mm -hmm. or on sale or are employee favorites or whatever it is. Um, those banners are great because they help a customer know when something is new or on sale and it makes them more likely to purchase. 
But it's interesting that they're only using it on their product page and not on the previous page. We right. we definitely suggest that you carry that over. Be subtle your, about it. Yeah, you know, don't like don't make it yeah. overwhelming, but right. yeah, definitely carry that over to your product listing pages because that's going to help distinguish what they want in a whole heap of products. If they see something that's new or something that's on sale, they're more likely to click on that and make a purchase. Right. So definitely consider carrying those over into other pages. Grace, we see this a lot with the add to cart, add to registry, and right. obviously registries we were already talking about is important but what are your thoughts on that level of proximity next to the core almost this kind of uh either or right. design scenario what do you think i mean it can be problematic and i would i would love to talk to them to know more about it because maybe their business is half registry half you know people purchasing That's on true. their own you yeah, never know but if it's not that then this is kind of a difficult subject because I would not be treating these as an either or. Mm -hmm. I would be maybe treating add to cart as more of a text link and then, I mean, add to registry is more of a text link and then still add to cart. Still prominent, still yeah, there. Still there, still yeah. maybe even in the same place, but maybe not with a square around it, just so it's not exactly the same and competing with that add to cart element. Made in America, what do you think? I like the idea of it. I think it's great to have, these are, this is another like unique selling proposition kind of. It's like, oh, we our product is made in America. That's great. I would maybe consider making it a little bit smaller so it's not competing. You would make a flag like four times one? Okay. <laughs> maybe make it a All little right. smaller. You get the red, white, and blue. You know? yeah, yeah. So. All right, let's scroll down. What else have you seen on this page? So the one other thing that I really want, well, actually, their lifestyle imagery is great. That is They're nice. alternate the images. Yeah, yeah that's and, really nice. And their videos are great. This is the section that I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so they actually have similar products underneath this that are your cross-sell or your upsell, whatever they're using it for. Um, but some people might not even get to this because they see that recipe section and there's so much white space and like dead space that they might think that Let's the page... Let's see that along. If we can scroll back to the... Yeah, yeah. To the so, yeah. so right, if you're space. right here, it almost looks like the page is done, like there's yeah. nothing else. So I wonder if there's other pages that have like three to yeah, four recipes. Might. I don't know. Yeah. You know, with that, but, maybe we... But maybe they do. Yeah, but one solve could be, I would say, probably move your similar products above this. But yeah, and then, more important. Yeah, but then also maybe make this section into like a banner that just links to your recipe uh, page point, or whatever yeah. it is, you know. Don't treat it like a thumbnail. Right, just so it's not wasting all that space. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. So we want to click let's, on this? Yeah, let's add this to cart. So this is the cart. This is the first cart we've actually talked about. Right. Um, so one thing that we make sure that we do that is not something that everyone does but is a great best breast practice is to use an enclosed site frame. So what we mean by that is right now they're still using their full header and their full footer mm -hmm. on the cart page, and that's giving the user so many opportunities to click away from this page. It's a distraction. Yeah, you got them in the cart. You want right. them to make that purchase, but yet you're giving them a thousand ways to leave this yeah. page. Scroll down the footer, Yvonne, and show that. So you've got you know a lot of elements here. At this point, we don't need to be advertising no. your social media. No. Don't need to be focused on your newsletter. Keep keep the focus on yeah. checking out. So typically we just like to do your logo, uh, easy way to contact you, mm -hmm. and your maybe your your um, credit cards that you accept, and that's really it. I yeah. mean, that, that's really not anything else you need. Um, the only other thing I want to talk about this page is the button elements. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of competing elements here. Ivana, if you scroll up a little bit. So all the, go all the way to the top. So on page load, that Update shopping cart mm -hmm. is huge, mm -hmm. um, and it's actually not even needed until you actually change the quantity or anything like that. Right. So um, it, it should not be something that's popping out to you it's at all, in my opinion. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. And then um, continue shopping is also very bold, and it's going to take you away from this. So we don't want to do that. Um, so proceed to checkout. They did do good having that red. Um, but I would just say be careful about making that continue shopping and the proceed to checkout compete with each other. Well, and the thought, too, with the proceed to checkout is I would look at an or uh, before the login with Amazon because it almost implies, yeah. this can imply that in order to proceed to checkout, these yeah. two are related. Yeah. So yeah. even though somebody sees two different rectangles, they could put two and two together. Um, but I would just be very clear about that. All right. Amir, any thoughts before we go on to the next site? What do you think about Nordic Wear? I would just say everything that Grace said. I think it's really important to keep the eyes on the prize, right? Make sure uh, that that millennial, that uh, that uh, shopper that has the lowest attention span, um, is is going exactly where they need to go. Right, and Amir, can you talk a little bit about 
So this is not a big commerce site. Can you talk a little bit about what big commerce does for their checkout that makes it a lot more seamless than this? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we do quite a bit of uh, research and uh, UI testing with our merchants uh, over time to understand what are the best ways uh, to actually take a shopper through that journey uh, and give them this most seamless experience. So what we've landed on is our one-page checkout that uh, most of our merchants leverage, although we give them the full capability of customizing it, um, to, to really easily take a shopper through the four steps of checkout without having to go through different pages. Because, you know, uh, as, some, as I said earlier, the quicker you get them through that process from the top of the funnel all the way through the checkout, uh, the more likely that you are going to convert that cart. So, um, Popping up uh, options like um, you know Apple Pay or Google Pay uh, right around uh, that email area or Amazon Pay if you if you're leveraging any of those wallets are really important because those are some new functions that a shopper could just click on and not have to fill out all of that information. Uh, but then you know um, uh, reducing the the number of required fields as much as possible so that the shopper can also quickly go through it, uh, log in if they have an account uh, and and be able to do that all in one page without having to refresh that page. I think those are some really key elements that a lot of the multi-step uh, checkout pages uh, kind of get the get a higher bounce rate uh, versus the one-page checkouts. Good point. Grace, what do you think on that? Is that Yeah, I think, I think he summed it up great. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have one more site to cover, and that's Go Power Sports. Also going to get to your questions. If you have any for us, we see those coming in. Uh, let us know in the comment box, and we'll make sure to uh, cover those. The next site is Go Power Sports, and uh, Grace also had a chance to talk to this CEO and uh, cover some of their goals. And they are using a big commerce theme. Maybe before we critique this, we turn it back to Amir. Amir, when you think about uh, what the big uh, commerce themes offer merchants, wh what are your general thoughts? Yeah, generally, when we recommend uh, themes, it's it's really about um, getting you started, right? A theme is not to, meant to be um, your your end point. Although, if you're a brand new business, if you're uh, just getting up and um, started on your online journey, totally, it, that could get you get you started quick. You can have a storefront to to start selling your products online. But if you're established business, if you've already been um, online and and transacting currently out and about, um, a theme could be a good starting point it, because Big Commerce gives you access to uh, the entirety of the code base and a full capability of customizing things throughout the experience. It could give you a baseline for you to start um, basically painting on that, ca on that uh, canvas and uh, make it your home, change the coloring, change the way that the buttons look like, uh, and the layout, which uh, you know uh, really is the UI and the experience that the shopper would see and where they see at what point. So I think um, really taking that theme, um, massaging it a little bit to your uh, audience, I think is really important, especially for well-established businesses. Great points, Amir. I appreciate you going through that. And, and Vaughn, if you could scroll all the way down, all the way down. The, okay, so we have a banner here saying free shipping on most orders over $300. I see two problems with this, Grace, is mm -hmm. first of all, most, right? What's wrong with that? So we never want to say that right off the bat. You know, we, we would probably say free shipping on orders over $300, asterisk at the bottom, some exclusions may apply. You yeah. know, you don't want to imply automatically that what does most mean? Like you don't want to create that confusion for your customer right yeah, off the bat. It all comes back to answering what's important to the customer and being really clear. And you can protect yourself, like you said, right. with that additional information. Um, but this is a good value. I mean, the fact that they're they're offering this is great, but it's at the bottom of the yeah. page, right? And this could work against you with the theme. Come on, if we can scroll all the way back up. Okay, so we have the top nav, which is going left to right. Then we have a nav going uh, top to bottom with the shop by category. What I'm seeing as a challenge here, Grace, is that you have things like mini bike parts, uh, the fifth link there at the top, but you also have it further down in the shop by category. And these don't correspond, right? I mean, we're leading off with different things, different flyout uh, subcategories. I would think that even within this theme, this is something the merchant could address right now. Maybe they, they look at the top nav 
is more informational or category uh, specific. What do you think? How would you fix that? Yeah, I would say people are, are trained to use those main links at the top as shopping links. Mm -hmm. So I would say something that they could do right off the bat is make those all your shopping links. And like you were saying, maybe use that, what they're using as shop by category right now for more information, Right. more informational links. Because right now it's just creating confusion. I don't know where to click when I see the same thing in both menus. Yeah. Uh, it's just It's confusing. making the customer think too right. much, right? And you don't want to have to do that. Right. And Grace, <laughs> one of the things that uh, I talked to the owner about, it, believe it or not, a huge percentage of their uh, customers are coming from YouTube. So they market to DIYers, and you have uh, two classes, if you will, of DIYers, the folks who have been doing it a long time and the folks that are new to it, right? Mm -hmm. And so for the newbie DIYers, they're watching the videos, and then they come to Go Power Sports to get the products, right? It's to start putting these things together. So with that in mind, let's click to videos, Ivana. I like how they have things like customer photo gallery. I mean, they put a lot of thought into this site. You know, there's so many things they could do with this. But really quickly, with the how-to videos, the first thing I, I would state is these don't look like videos, right? They look like uh, category graphics with a small exactly. orange uh, square with a play button in it. What, what could they do on this page, Greg? I mean, obviously, just make them look more like videos. So put them at the right aspect ratio. Put mm -hmm. a big play button over them. Um, have the titles. You could even group them by what you're looking at. So if you're looking at a go-kart build, here's four videos on go-kart builds. They could group them by uh, engine builds. Here's four videos for engine builds. You know, just, just making this easier for the customer to digest because this is such great information, but it's just, it's overwhelming and it doesn't even look like what it is. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, what I'm thinking too, is we close this one out, uh, we want to go on to Q&A here in just a second. Um, but what I'm thinking is, what they could do within big commerce is have the videos, maybe marry it with a uh, corresponding article. If somebody wanted to read that information, it's great, again, great for SEO, mm -hmm. but also have some products that would correspond to what is being featured in that content. So when people see all the great content, they could link directly to uh, products that they could uh, go and purchase. What do you think, Amir? Yeah, I think. I mean, it does absolutely agree with that. If there's a lot of uh, opportunity to uh, improve upon a base theme, um, just just like Grace mentioned, um, pop, make the information pop. I think we looked at a few different sites that are just. Uh, I think you mentioned something about and um, show your gimmick. Is that is that what you mentioned, Eric? Is that yeah, absolutely was that yeah. the right term? Yeah. So um, these high consideration products, right? You want to make sure uh, that you're educating the shopper and. That's what's unique about the brand, right? Uh, shoppers are going to come back if they learn something about you, especially in that high consideration or um, products uh, to uh, to learn more. But then you can, you have the opportunity of uh, selling them something that you're selling, uh, you're, you're offering in that in that line of uh, products. That's right, and I think like I mean, you said, Grace, this is such a great opportunity to yeah. explain that gimmick and own the fact that you are a site that caters to DIYers, that yeah. love this craft, that love putting this stuff together. You're into go-karts, it's fun. <laughs> you know, and, and sometimes the design can get in the way of that fun, yeah. and we need to really let that, that shine. I yeah. think that's really the key to their brand. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so for some next steps, uh, we want to encourage you guys that if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one site review, if we didn't get to your site today, don't worry. Uh, we can either feature you on an upcoming webinar or uh, like other merchants have uh, requested, we can set up a one-on-one -on -one site. A uh, member of EY Studios and Big Commerce are happy to meet with you on that. Uh, just shoot us an email, info at eystudios.com. Give us a call. Uh, hit the comment box. Let us know if you'd be interested in that. Um, so with that in mind, I want to also encourage you to mark your calendar. Our next webinar is already scheduled. It is February the 26th. We'll have a, another Big Commerce uh, persona featured there. We appreciate Amir joining us on our inaugural edition of the big review, but we've got a really cool uh, webinar uh, already planned out for February the 26th. Mark your calendars. We'll be updating the landing page with more information there. So uh, be sure to check back with that. Um, so let's get into Q&A. What do you think? Yeah. All right. So Vonna, cue it up. What are our questions here? All right. So Emily wants to know, how do you feel about featuring background list products versus more stylized product images for category pages? 
That's a good question. So I, I prefer keeping it very clean. So no mm -hmm. backgrounds on your category page. It just keeps it cleaner. It makes you focus on the product, the price, the proceeding down that sales funnel. And then once you get to that product page, you can do alternate images with mm -hmm. backgrounds to kind of show the more lifestyle photography of it. But I would say for those category pages, just keeping it cleaner. I 100% agree because you've got more space to yeah. do that on the product page and we have to keep in mind that the user when they're comparing the various products on the section page, right. color as we've talked about many times mm -hmm. on this own webinar is so important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these background uh, images can be extremely yeah. colorful and it creates just a mishmash totally. of, a, of a confusing layout and so we really want to zero in on the, the specific product and we would recommend uh, the, the varying background for the product page. There are exceptions, yeah, right, Grace, sure. on that, but that, that's a general rule. Yeah. Okay, what's next, Yvonne? All right, so Michael wants to know, um, what are your thoughts on ADA compliance for websites? Oh, Ooh, that's a timely good. question. Yeah, hey, can we pull, can we pull up Girl Grace that we were showing earlier? <laughs> So when, while Ivana pulls this up, when we're talking about ADA compliance, there we're we're talking about some issues that are actually legal issues. Right. Um, and you can get in trouble. You can get sued or in yeah. trouble for these things. So some things, one thing that we would like I to point out with like this specific site um, is, so if you look up there at the very top with the utility links that we were talking about earlier, like the, the my account, yeah, sign in, links. create an account, gift certificate. So those that's like a gray color on a black. Um, um, background, which some people with some color blindness or sight problems might not even be able to see that. So that creates even legal legal problems. So we have plugins and all these things that we work with to make sure that everything is up to ADA standards and we're designing things perfectly for you guys. It's becoming more and more standard right, these days. Exactly. There are yeah. Lawyers. Go ahead, Amir. What are you thinking? I was going to add, uh, there, there's quite a bit that we do here at Big Commerce to make sure uh, a lot of things are ADA compliant. So uh, from the dashboard standpoint, um, we we are 95% uh, ADA compliant. So we have uh, some merchants leveraging um, the, the dashboard uh, with uh, the business users with disabilities, as well as on the front end, all of our themes, the standard of uh, our framework is to make sure that they have all the right uh, tags out of the box uh, available. But to Grace's point, there are some really great extensions that you can, or apps that you can install um, to that uh, basically just take that uh, that uh, saturation of the colors or uh, font sizes and different pieces uh, right on top of the theme and, and they could help a lot with uh, ADA compliance and accessibility uh, regulations. Yeah, that's, that's really good points, Amir. I just want to point out that this does not have to sacrifice any key aesthetics on the no, side. I think never. a lot of people are worried about that, right, Grace? Right, but we make sure it still looks good. Yeah, I mean, there's, you just have to keep it in mind <laughs> yeah. when you're designing versus making an afterthought is, right. is what we would say. Um, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, so I think that's that's it. Vaughn, is anything else? Um, the last one? No, I, yeah. Okay. Um, so, guys, if you do that, think of any other questions, just let us know. Uh, send us an email. Call us up. We'll hope you'll join us on the next webinar. Again, that's uh, in February 26th. Is that right? Mm -hmm. February 26th. And I just want to thank uh, Amir. Amir, thank you so much for making time and, and being a key part of our very first uh, webinar. You guys are awesome to work with. We love working on the platform. I'll give you the final word, Amir, as we wrap up. What are your thoughts? Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for having us uh, on. We, we are super excited to, um, uh, you know, work, be working with you guys over at EY Studios. And uh, congratulations again on, on the Partner of the Year Award. Uh, and um, send us your questions. Let us know if you want a private um, review of your site. We're happy to, uh, to jump on a call uh, with EY Studios to, to answer any questions you have. Uh, and thanks for listening today. Fantastic. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you soon. See you soon.